South Africa could be in the middle of a peaceful democratic revolution. Embattled South African President Jacob Zuma celebrated his 75th birthday on Wednesday, and in response, 120,000 plus South Africans, black and white, took to the streets of the capital, Pretoria. Not to celebrate, but to demand the resignation of the president after his cabinet shuffle resulted in two downgrades to South Africa's credit, which now sits at junk status. The protests were a follow-up to the March for Change on April 7th, which saw protests in cities across the country. The march on Wednesday was organized by seven opposition parties, all working together to demand the resignation of President Zuma. I followed the protests online late into the night Vancouver time, and I have to say I am so impressed by what is an incredible display of unity between all South Africans. Take a look at some of these images. The official opposition party, the Democratic Alliance, saw thousands and thousands of supporters wearing blue. Even the fairly radical third party, the Economic Freedom Fighters, were out wearing red. And you can see white and black South Africans of many different political parties uniting to oppose the ruling ANC and President Zuma. You know, South Africa gets this bad reputation for being a dangerous country, and having visited there so many times myself, I get frustrated by that claim. I'm actually more impressed by this display of unity in protesting Zuma in the streets of Pretoria on Wednesday than I am with the current state of affairs in the United States. Whether it's at Berkeley or NYU, American political protests have been far more likely to erupt in violence than what we've seen in South Africa. And that's despite the crowds being many, many times larger and racial tensions running at their highest point since the end of apartheid in 1994. Just take a look at this clip of a white South African dancing with black economic freedom fighter supporters. <laughs> Having just watched that, try imagining a Black Lives Matter activist dancing with a bunch of white Trump supporters in the US. It just would not happen. No chance someone from Black Lives Matter would be that friendly to the other side, and there would almost certainly be an eruption of violence. Perhaps Zuma has indeed united the country, white, black, brown, young or old, because it appears that anyone that is not an ANC diehard has been willing to come together for a common cause, ending President Zuma's corrupt and crony reign over what should be the strongest economy in Africa by far. Sadly though, it appears the ANC and Zuma are digging in hard. This is very reminiscent of what was going on about 15 years ago in Zimbabwe, when it appeared that President Robert Mugabe might be on his way out the door. Back then, Mugabe consolidated power, changed the constitution, and ramped up the seizing of land from white Rhodesian farmers. Now Zuma appears to be following the Mugabe playbook from that era putting the country on course to become a dictatorship. Just take a look at this story in a South African publication that says radio stations were instructed to play a special birthday song for President Zuma on Wednesday. Heck, that one's actually out of the playbook of Kim Jong-un. How about this other story here though, where another South African publication openly speculates that Zuma and the ANC could be looking to change the constitution to allow Zuma to become, quote, dictator for life much like the now 93-year-old Mugabe has become in Zimbabwe. On top of that, the leader of the opposition Democratic Alliance, Mumusi Mamane, has been receiving numerous credible death threats lately. So bad, he was forced for the first time in his life to wear a bulletproof vest to the protests on April 7th. All of this may seem dire, and it is. But what we saw last Wednesday on the streets of the capital, Pretoria, gives me so much hope. When we see whites and blacks, economic freedom fighters and democratic alliance supporters, Boers and Zulus all coming together for one go common goal, to uphold South Africa's constitution and remove the corrupt President Zuma from power, it gives me a lot of hope that we will not see another repeat of Zimbabwe in South Africa. For the Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Thanks for watching. I'll keep you updated to all the happenings in South Africa over the coming days. But if you're a Canadian and you want an exclusive YouTube channel just for Canadian stories, well, we've got one. It's called Rebel Canada, and we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe today.